Great. Okay. We good? Uh, thank you. Um, again, uh, thank you all for being here today, um, and welcome to the official launch of the ARPA-H Investor Catalyst Hub. Well, uh, Thank you, thank you, Mo. Um, my name is Mark Marino. Uh, I'm the vice president at VentureWell um, and the project director of the ARPA-H Investor Catalyst Hub, uh, part of the ARPA-NET-H uh, National Health Innovation Network. Um, many of you in this room uh, here in Massachusetts uh, worked really side by side with us these past few months um, to arrive uh, exactly at this point. Um, and so this, this evening is really the culmination of all of that work and a celebration um, that you all get to, to, to enjoy with us uh, and with our, our new colleagues at ARPA Age. Um, but it is also just the beginning. Uh, this, is, this is the starting line of the work that is ahead. Um, to truly fulfill ARPA Age's mission of improving health outcomes for all Americans, uh, we will need to activate the potential of every single person uh, in this room. We will need your expertise, we will need your insights, and most importantly, we will need you to help us grow this network well beyond Massachusetts to every state, every district, every territory, um, and every main street in this country. Um, so thank you to all the ARPA humans uh, and Venture World team that made this event possible, and a special thanks to the Charm Coalition and MassBio uh, for sponsoring uh, all of those food and beverages you're all enjoying. Um, so now to welcome you to this really lovely layout in space, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the Honorable Mo Cowan, uh, board member of Mass Challenge. Thank you, Mark. Well, hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you for being here. We at Mass Challenge are thrilled to host you in this space for this occasion. On behalf of my colleagues of the board, the entire Mass Challenge team, and Mass Mutual, in whose broader space we're in, we welcome you to this grand venue for this grand occasion. And I couldn't think of a better reason for us all to come together in celebration of the award of the opportunity for Massachusetts once again to show the world that this is the leading place for innovation, and particularly innovation in healthcare. Innovation is certainly what Mass Challenge is about, and it was the innovative ideas, efforts, and joint decision by many in the Commonwealth to come together and make the case that this opportunity should be ours, not for our benefit, but for the benefit of the greater society in the world. Many of you in this room are responsible for that, and for that we, you have all of our gratitude. And I am deeply grateful that you chose Mass Challenge as a venue and as a partner in this effort. You're gonna hear from some wonderful speakers today. I'm not among them. I'm simply here to welcome you to this space and welcome us all together to this opportunity. Today is the beginning of something extraordinary. I can't even begin to imagine what those extraordinary results are going to be for the near and the long term and for the many lives together we're going to impact for the greater good. Thank you all for being here Thank you for all the things you have yet to do, but will be necessary for you to do for us to fully realize the potential, the promise, and the opportunity. Congratulations to everyone. Let's get to work. Mark? Uh, thank you, thank you, Mo. And uh, again, thank you to all of the partners in this space that really made, made this event uh, uh, happen. Uh, so it is now my pleasure uh, to introduce um, the next speaker, uh, the Honorable Mayor Wu. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Senator Cowan, and, and to all of the incredible leaders gathered here. I am so honored to be with this crowd and um, to be opening up the speaking program, which will have a number of distinguished guests as well. Um, this is one of those moments, you know, in Boston, we are often so fiercely local and so fiercely proud. We're very clear that Boston is not Somerville. Boston is not Cambridge. Tonight is an example where Boston really encompasses everything, including Kendall Square and Cambridge. And, and so I have that same pride. <laughs> 
Um, congratulations to everyone who had a hand in this incredible achievement for the greater Boston region and for Massachusetts, our federal delegation who made the case and advocated so hard. Our Senator Markey, I know, will be joining us, and Senator Warren, and, and to all of, the, uh, our, all of our representatives, to Governor Healy and her team. Uh, thank you so much for the best partners that we could have in state government and to the many, many leaders representing our healthcare and life sciences sector and uh, mass bio leading the charge, and especially to our community members. I see Gladys Vega here, uh, really the, the closer, as I hear, uh, in this situation and so many others. We are so proud that Boston is known nationally, internationally, as the place where history meets innovation where for our nearly 400 year history, we've had a legacy of people coming together around big ideas that change the world. From the birth of American democracy, to every major social movement in between, to inventing life-saving vaccines in the middle of the pandemic, to curing cancer and Alzheimer's and all that is going to come from this incredible endeavor. I am so excited that uh, the initiative here has from the very beginning been centered not only around our amazing anchor institutions and the big companies and, and the sector that is delivering on, on life sciences and healthcare, but on the community members who live this every day. And having Ms. Vega in that pitch meeting, having the Reverend Willie Bodrick as part of the initiative really emphasize and I believe helped make the case to those decision makers that Boston is a place where care and innovation happens in every single corner of our neighborhoods, not just in our labs and, and hospitals. And so we intend to keep that legacy moving forward with the collaboration, the excitement, the increased innovation that this will spark and um, please count the city of Boston as a very eager partner in all the initiatives here, not only for the next big breakthroughs and ensuring that we have the talent workforce and the pipeline and the uh, resources to deliver, but that it's felt every single day on the ground by our residents block by block in our neighborhoods. Thank you so much and congratulations to all. Uh, thank you, um, Mayor of the Greater Boston Region. Um, uh, now to uh, uh, contextualize a little bit of the work and what we're going to showcase um, even later in the program uh, is the director of the Project Accelerator Transition Innovation Office, or PATIO, uh, Craig Ravitz, to, to talk a little bit about what ARPA-H is and what, what we'll be doing as part of the Investor Catalyst Hub. So, Craig. Mark. Welcome, everybody. This is super cool to be here. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of context for you. In probably like February or March, uh, Renee and I were in our WeWork uh, in, in D.C., and she's like, hey, I have this idea for you. Um, we have this, this statutory requirement to have three sites, and I want to do this thing where we can actually make it really useful and like really take this concept and take it to the next level. I'm like, I got you. Um, and I think it's the most... ARPA. So if you want to know what ARPA is all about, we're here today. So in that time, we you know, designed a, a really amazing capability. We competed it, and um, we had some really wonderful winners. So congratulations to all of you. And we launched. And to just show you the time scale that we work at, you know, from idea to concept to actual implementation can be that quickly. Um, and that's the speed that we have to move at if we're actually going to help people. Okay. So, I want to tell you actually a little bit about what this is, because uh, I think there's still even a little bit of confusion now. So, fundamentally at an ARPA, our job is to make what seems impossible, debunk that and show that it's actually possible. So we have program managers like Darshak uh, right here, these, uh, these technical geniuses who can make these things happen, and these sort of technical solutions um, bring them to life. But our theory of the case is that um, if you create this wonderful tactical innovation but it just sits on the shelf somewhere, it's not going to matter. It has to get to people. And so what ARPANET H is, is that transition strategy that's just as creative as the underlying science. And it's our way of investing in actually making things real. 
so just very briefly, um, I, I love human-centered design, and there's this concept that was popularized by the uh, design firm IDEO. And it's basically, it says, like, it's this Venn diagram where innovation comes at the cross-section of three things, or the center of three things. So one is technical feasibility. That's what Darshak, Ross, and our other program managers do. They make what seems impossible, and they prove that it's possible. But then there's two other pieces to that um, that are just as important. So there's desirability. This is people. So this is talking about, um, do I trust what people are building? Can I afford it? Is it accessible to me? That's all about customers. That's all about people, the patients that we're trying to solve for. If we're not solving a problem that matters to people, then it doesn't really matter what we're doing. That's our customer experience network. And then the investor catalyst network that we have here, this is all about the viability or the business, uh, the business dynamics that like, underlie everything that we do. So is there a, uh, a business model? Can you actually launch this um, in a way that will survive in the wild? Um, will it pass regulatory muster? Is there a reimbursement pathway for that? And that's fundamentally triangulating those three things is what this network is all about. And you can't get at those things unless you're with all of the innovators all across the country, and that's fundamentally what this network does. So we are going to um, understand the concerns of people, desirability. We're going to understand the concerns of markets, viability. And with our program managers, um, we're really going to unblock these technical uh, bottlenecks. Welcome to ARPANET H, and um, we're looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, thank you, Craig. Um, so that was a little bit about what we're doing. And so now to take you a little bit back in time uh, to how was it created. So it is, uh, again, my distinct honor and pleasure uh, to, to bring up one of, uh, again, uh, architects and, and the reason why ARPA-H is now in existence, uh, the Honorable Senator uh, Ed Markey. Congratulations, everyone. What a big day for us, huh? This is uh, about as good uh, as it gets as a... Um, as a celebration, uh, it's just uh, pointing towards uh, the 21st century and all of the great new things which uh, Massachusetts is going to add, uh, not just to our country, but to the entire planet. So um, congratulations to uh, everyone. And um, I'm here with my uh, wife, um, Rear Admiral, um, former Assistant Surgeon General, Dr. Susan Blumenthal. Um, Uh, when I met her, she was the chief of behavioral medicine at the National Institutes of Health, mental health, depression, suicide. And then she went on to run all of women's health in the United States, the first deputy assistant secretary for women's health in our nation's history. And she's been dreaming about a day like today for a long time, giving those dreams to an Irish Catholic politician from Malden. Okay, so, uh, so I'm, I'm so glad that she is able to be with uh, us here uh, today. And, um, and to um, the Investor Catalyst Hub here in Boston. And I want to congratulate Dr. Renee um, Wegerson uh, and this incredible uh, moment, this incredible leader who has been given uh, this job as the first director of ARPA-H, uh, which comes, um, uh, who is going to come to the agency from DAPA, the Defense Research Agency, and from Ginkgo Bioworks. Uh, the recombinant research DNA uh, of, uh, of Boston. So we, um, uh, we're just so lucky to have her. And, and I wish all my House colleagues could be here as well, but they're still down in Washington. Tip O'Neill used to say, all politics is local. Now it's all politics is loco, but it's kind of sorting out a little bit down there in the House. But she, uh, uh, Ayana and Richie Neal and, um, and uh, Laurie Trahan, they wish they could be here, but it's just not possible at this moment. And uh, Marty Meehan, I saw right over here, hosted a great meeting that we had just uh, about a year ago to begin to plan. Uh, and um, uh, and so it's just so great to be here. I've been saying for years that ARPA-H 
now knows what kn knows this to be true that we're not only the Bay State, we're the brain state as well. We are the uh, world's biotech hub, literally. More than 100,000 biotech jobs are here. I am the chair of the health subcommittee in the United States Senate. So I know that every other member of that committee points to and asks me about what's going on in Massachusetts. And there is no better home for RPH's investor catalyst hub than our home right here. After all, it's in our DNA. We are the dream team for advancing health research. So here's the proof. We're just 2% of the country's population, but we represent 9% of all national institutes of health funding right here. We're home to five of the top NIH-funded hospitals. That's like having Larry Bird, Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, John Havlicek, Paul Pierce, Jason Tatum, all as your doctors simultaneously working on problems, looking, look, uh, working on issues. Uh, and to advance that metaphor, we have the former captain of the Harvard women's basketball team quarterbacking our effort uh, in order uh, to win this award. So uh, we're so proud of you, Governor, for the incredible team that you put together, the dream team, to win uh, this incredible designation. We received the second largest amount of funding for the National Science Foundation. We're 2% of the population. California is 12%, but we're right behind them in receiving that funding. We have more than 1,000 biotech companies. We account for 15% of the U.S. drug development pipeline helping health providers treat cancer, brain diseases, infectious diseases, illnesses with novel therapies. We're beating nearly every other state in the growth of bio uh, pharmaceutical jobs. Uh, and so this is the place to have this incredible, incredible cutting edge institution. Uh, we are the, the state that developed and distributed COVID-19 vaccines worldwide in the blink of a research eye, and we rolled out the vaccine at no cost across the state at an unprecedented pace in history. The partnership, the collaboration between research institutions, industry, community organizations, government officials turned theory into practice. It was revolutionary. It happened here. In short, we know what it means to turn talent and research funding into real results for all Americans. And at our best, we translate those breakthroughs into new preventative strategies, diagnostic um, uh, methods, treatments, and cures that all Americans can access. We turn research into medicine's field of dreams from which we're harvesting the findings that give families the hope that we will find the breakthroughs for the families, for the diseases that have been ravaging their families for generations. And already, APA H has awarded grants to Massachusetts medical schools, research institutions, companies working to address critical health concerns like antimicrobial resistance, autoimmune diseases, and early cancer, cancer detection. And just this month, APA H announced uh, that they are going uh, to uh, have an, in, an initiative to improve clinical trials access. Uh, participation in research that develops new treatments that will enable 90% of all eligible Americans to participate in a research study within 30 minutes of their home. That's revolutionary because we need to have diverse participation in research equity so that scientific findings will work for everyone. That's the goal of our great mayor every day trying to ensure that everyone is included. That is the, the goal that our great governor has every single day. Equity is built into everything they do every single day, and it will be built into this new, modern, forward-looking way in which we're looking at all these issues. And now picked as one of only three hubs in the country, the Investor Catalyst Hub, coordinated by VentureWell, will supercharge the greatest scientific minds of our country to develop tomorrow's cures by clearing the pathway from the research lab to the marketplace. We will become the mega brain state. <laughs> Advancements in healthcare mean nothing if they don't get into the hands of doctors and patients who need them. And right now, according to the National Academy of Medicine, there is a 15 year science to service gap between the time of new discovery in the laboratory 
and its wide dissemination into communities and in the information age, why isn't it in a nanosecond? That's what the Investor Catalyst Hub will be all about, unlocking this potential for everyone and fast. And I have no doubt that these innovations are just around the corner. And sadly, there's a 20-year life expectancy gap uh, in Massachusetts and across the country based upon the zip code where you live. We need to ensure equity is at the heart of these new initiatives uh, and accelerate the speed of translating scientific findings into uh, uh, saving lives across all income groups, across all racial divides. And so just having Gladys Vega, great team you put together, Governor, Gladys Vega, Mariana Mattis, Dr. Ann Klebanski as the team, they're like the holy trinity of healthcare, <laughs> community connection, biopharmaceutical innovation, and groundbreaking healthcare providers, all working together in partnership. So congratulations uh, to all of you. It was a team effort. We thank the governor, thank the mayor for their leadership. Uh, it's it's going to be a special role that we're going to play uh, in bringing all of this innovation, not just to our own country, but to the world, to, say, to, uh, to guarantee that uh, we have a better, healthier, more uh, equitable world for everyone to enjoy. Congratulations, everyone. Just such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, uh, and to just continue the, uh, the metaphor um, and talk a little bit about uh, Team Massachusetts point guard, um, uh, who made everyone around them better. Uh, as soon as the news was announced that Massachusetts would be the home of the Investor Catalyst Hub, uh, one of the first calls I got uh, was, from, was from the governor, uh, again, thanking uh, us for the work, which is like a good point guard, makes everyone better, facilitates credit, takes none on her own. Uh, and even this morning, uh, being in Chelsea, uh, in the community, as we toured La Collaborativa, uh, uh, and having the governor be a part of that. So it is my great pleasure to, in, uh, to uh, introduce uh, Governor Maura Healy. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark, and congratulations to VentureWell. We are really proud, too, that with this, um, a nonprofit headquartered in Western Massachusetts, is running point for this effort. So that is pretty cool as well. Um, congratulations to all of you in this room because it really took the efforts of all of you, so many in this room and others who could not be here tonight, to bring this home for Massachusetts. And we're bringing home something that is gonna make meaningful change in the course, the trajectory of people's lives here and importantly, across the world. That's something you all should be incredibly, incredibly proud of. And I am just grateful uh, for the work, the years and years of study, of research, of development, all that it took to position Massachusetts to have this shot and this opportunity. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen because somebody gets elected. Um, it happens because there's a foundation there. And I think I speak on behalf of Mayor would let me say this, I think. We understand the foundations here. They're really, really special here in Boston and across this Commonwealth. And we are grateful to all who have been part of creating and furthering that infrastructure. Uh, Director Wiggerson, it's great to see you. I can't see you right now. I know you're here. Um, hello. Um, and it was wonderful to be with you this morning in Chelsea. Congratulations to you and to your team. Uh, in this incredibly important startup venture, essentially, that, uh, that is just so, so exciting. Thank you for your belief in our people, in this state, our values, and most importantly, your belief in our ability to deliver innovative solutions to needed health care across the planet. Hosting ARPA-H's Investor Catalyst Hub is a huge win for our state, it's one we fought hard for because we believe in its transformative mission. 
And I want to thank all the people who made this historic moment possible through their hard work and their talent and also their passion and their values and their perseverance uh, that kept them at this. Senator Markey, thank you for your leadership and your vision, um, your leadership across so many realms when it comes to building healthier, livable communities. That extends to the work you do on climate and your leadership there, and certainly what you led um, here in helping uh, achieve the, the creation of ARPA-H. We're grateful to your colleagues as well. We miss them. We want them back here. But I know each and every one of our fantastic uh, members of our congressional delegation take great pride in this and see the value in this. And we're grateful um, that they took the action to, to see this was going to be funded. Um, to Mayor Michelle Wu, who's been a fantastic partner on so, so many fronts, I appreciate so much how our values align, the values and vision that we have for the state, for the city, um, and the work of our teams align. And thank you for being a champion um, for the kind of innovation and the kind of inclusivity that is truly a hallmark and I think representative of what this Investor Catalyst Hub is all about. We've got state legislators in the room. I see Ann-Margaret Ferrante. I know there are probably others here, so I'll get myself in trouble. Thank you for continuing to fund life sciences. We're able to do what we're able to do in Massachusetts because we have that foundation, and that foundation remains incredibly important in the time ahead. To our team in the office, um, I just want to say on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor and myself, we are so fortunate to work with so many talented, engaged uh, energetic leaders in their own right in the office. Our economic development team led by our fabulous secretary, Yvonne Howe. We thank her as a longtime leader in the health innovation economy. Um, and her entire team worked very hard. Rory, I hope you can sleep better tonight because it's all, you landed the plane. Um, our Health and Human Services team, led by our fantastic secretary, Kate Walsh, a longtime leader in our health care and hospital sector. The team at the Mass Life Sciences Center, our shining example of what forward-thinking government partnership with industry looks like. Senator Mo Cowan and everyone at Mass Challenge, uh, we appreciate so much this globally recognized accelerator. Dr. Klebanski, wonderful to see you and thank you for being here and for the work that you and your teams did uh, in this effort. Dr. Mariana Matus, uh, wonderful to see you again. A Biobot Analytics, I didn't know anything about Biobot Analytics until a couple of years ago, uh, but what an example of our brilliant and diverse innovators, right, who were in the right place at the right time, ready to deploy incredibly useful, innovative technology um, when a pandemic hit our country, and we're delighted to, to see you. And of course, the great Gladys Vega of La Collaborativa, whose passion for community and track record in health equity is at the core of what we're seeking to achieve with this bold initiative. We had the chance to stand this morning inside La Collaborativa, where it was great because business wasn't shut down. There were continued to see clients and patients, and I think it was a great way to see um, the energy and the focus of an initiative like this in action and what is possible through this. These outstanding leaders represent hundreds more, as I mentioned, of our communities, um, of our labs, of our companies, of our research institutions. Special shout out, of course, to the University of Massachusetts and President Marty Meehan. Uh, we're proud of all our campuses, and I know that in the early days of this, you, along with Richie Neal, had a strong vision for what this would mean for Massachusetts. And we've managed to cover the state from western Massachusetts right here to the waterfront. And, uh, and that's what you do in, in education as well. They also represent, all these entities represent the open and collaborative spirit that we believe will make this Investor Catalyst Hub a success for ARPA-H, a big win, and a benefit to the nation and the world. And that is why when President Biden announced ARPA-H, we knew right away that this was something that Massachusetts was built for and that we were going to work really hard to, uh, to win. And that we should win um, because we are a leader, we've been a leader, 
And the times right now require a lot of leadership and the ability to get things done. And when I look across the room today, it's clear we have the leaders who understand goals and drive and vision and initiative and bring the energy to actually get things done, to turn innovative ideas into practical, accessible, and equitable solutions that will provide health and well-being to folks across the world. Um, that's what we do in Massachusetts. That's who we are. We, we are in our, we're that in our colleges and our universities and our research institutes, our hospitals, healthcare systems, medical labs, incubators and accelerators, our venture capital investors. Where are they? In our small businesses. Uh, thank you. Life science giants and scrappy startups. We have it all and we draw talent from around the globe to solve the world's toughest problems and deliver results. That's the water that we swim in. Problem solving, creativity, and collaboration. So we are proud to host the Investor Catalyst Hub. We look forward to forging relationships with established and new spokes across the country. We're committed to making most of this opportunity and delivering for ARPA-H and for America. We want to bring all of our talent and, polit and potential to bear in this work. And that's why we as a state will continue to do things like advance every equity at every step of the innovation economy from our STEM education to college access to workforce readiness um, to mentorship to startup funding. We're passionate about delivering equity in our outcomes with access to health solutions for traditionally underserved communities here in Massachusetts. And that's how I know we'll have the greatest impact because we've done this, some of this before. This is an opportunity to do it on a whole new scale with a whole lot of brain power and support. Um, and I'll leave it at that. You know, I, I brag on Massachusetts all the time that, you know, we're a state of first, first school, first college, first park, first library. We're also home to the first anesthesia, the first cardiac surgery and more recently, the first mRNA vaccines delivered with equity to all of our communities during a pandemic. This is part of our DNA, as was said. It's part of uh, our history. And more importantly, it's part of um, what will fuel the work uh, ahead, the combined effort of uh, public-private partnership, of federal and state engagement, um, we're just so grateful. So thank you to everyone who helped make this happen. Thank you to everyone who helped bring this home. Know that all of you in this room have a partner in the state of Massachusetts, and I wish everyone, I wish everyone the very best in the time ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Governor. Um, unfortunately, um, Senator Warren uh, couldn't join, uh, but she um, would like to also say remarks, and so we'll, we'll cut to a quick video um, and, and then come back uh, for the final part. <clears throat> final part. Hello, ARPA H. I'm Elizabeth Warren. I am sorry I couldn't be with you in person today, but I am so excited to celebrate the launch of ARPA Net H and its Investor Catalyst Hub, which will be stationed right here in Massachusetts. I know the importance of bringing lots of different people to the table to advance cutting edge research. This effort will create a nationwide health innovation network that will spur life changing advancements in drug development and healthcare delivery so that we can improve health outcomes in an equitable and measurable way. And as part of this network, the Investor Catalyst Hub will bring together researchers and entrepreneurs and investors to harness innovative ideas and bring game-changing health breakthroughs to market for the folks who need it most. Every American should be able to get the care they need when they need it. It's worth fighting for, and it's a goal that we'll come closer to achieving through your work at ARPA H. So, congratulations. I am so happy to be in this fight alongside you. Thank you for the incredible work that you do every day, and even better, the work you'll do tomorrow.
Great. Uh, so now, uh, why we're all uh, really here, uh, and that is to hear from ARPA H directly. So as Craig uh, pointed out and contextualized, let's uh, really talk about what, what this is, what the Investor Callus Hub is, what ARPA H is trying to do, and then hear uh, some examples uh, that showcase uh, what this work is. So uh, again, I get to uh, introduce uh, the quarterback slash point guard slash facilitator of, the, of ARPA H, Dr. Renee Wegerson. Good evening, Boston. It is super exciting to be here. Uh, last time that we were here, uh, we were part of a three-phase process, the competition uh, to determine who would be uh, our Investor Catalyst Hub. It started with a white paper, followed by a site visit. And when we were in Boston, I would say everybody looked a little bit more stressed out than they do today. <laughs> so it's, it's great to just be here and celebrate with you. Uh, sincere congratulations to the team. Uh, to VentureWell, uh, really excited to be partnering with you, um, and then thank you to Mass Challenge, of course, for, for hosting us here today. I also want to take a minute to thank some of our distinguished guests. So, Senator Markey, uh, you showed me the table where literally ARPA-H was first thought of almost a decade ago, uh, and so it was a lot of hard work uh, through the years to, to make this a reality, so um, I'm really excited to, to, to help lead the team to do that. Of course, Governor Healy, uh, your team, uh, Secretary Howe, I just, you, you brought the powerhouses together and, and really uh, just drove to a mission that I could tell from the very beginning that we shared. So it was, it was really uh, seeing how we're going to collaborate in the future was, was the vision that you gave us. And so, so thank you for, for pushing and leading that. Uh, Secretary Walsh and, of course, Mayor Wu uh, of Greater Boston, as I've, I've learned. I've learned that Cambridge isn't Boston. I didn't, I actually, I'll admit, I come to Boston all the time and I didn't know that until this process. So I'm a little guilty. <laughs> but what, it's, it's all Greater Boston uh, to us now. So, so ARPA H is in the business of, of taking big bets. And our big bets are towards a future of health that we all want to live in. We have some of our program managers here, Ross is here, Darshak, and so they go through a framework of they come to ARPA-H for a term appointment, and of course they're incredible doers, they have these great CVs, but they actually have a vision for how they want to change the future of health. And so at ARPA-H, we have a very privileged uh, position to ask, is that a future that I want to live in? And if it is, uh, we take a bet on them. And today we take a bet on Massachusetts. Uh, we think you can be part of that team. What was very important to us as, as part of this whole process was that not only could you rally the local community, but it was critical that you could really rally the nation. And so all of you innovators here know how hard it is to take innovation from the lab and into the real world. You can have brilliant minds to design technologies, but if you don't have the creative and brilliant minds to figure out what are the terms of the contract and the licensing and the IP to get it out there? It's dead in the water. If you don't have that innovation in the communities that actually have this, this, are this unrelenting uh, vision of how to serve that population down to the individuals, um, it was really um, what a privilege to spend the morning at uh, La Collaborativa this morning uh, with Gladys. Uh, and then also we went to a manhole with Biobot, got to collect some wastewater uh, and, and meet the municipal team that was doing that. It, it really takes everybody to do this. And that's why ARPA-H is here today. Well, we, we only have six programs launched, which I'll, I'll say my, my team was like, that's a lot. I and mean, it is a lot. We've only been, I, I've been sworn in about a year ago. Um, but we want to create these foundations so when those programs get to their end that, that we, we have a pathway forward to transition to communities um, and for sustainable investment. It's actually, it's, it's very critically important. We are modeled after DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Agency, which brought us stealth technology, which brought us the internet, the original ARPANET, which was four nodes. We're starting with three. Uh, and that's really the aspiration of where we want to go to. But at DARPA, when you, I was at DARPA, many of us in this room actually were, when you're successful with a project, the Department of Defense will develop this for you. You, you have a customer built in that doesn't exist for health. Health and Human Services, we have some wonderful representatives here today. They, they're our biggest cheerleaders, but they're not going to manufacture this for us, right? Uh, each of our states have a different approach to how we're going to pay for health care in many cases. And so it's important that we create ARPANET H to be the ecosystem that we can transition to. Um, that doesn't happen overnight. It's gonna take some time, but I know partnership with Boston will get us there. Um, we have a couple of VIPs in the room too. Uh, we, we have uh, Thymune, one of our first teams that's funded, our, our first small business. Um, I think representatives from HMS are here too. 
uh, under the, the DARPS uh, AMR program that uh, is really rethinking the way that, that we diagnose and, uh, and bring new therapeutics to combat uh, antimicrobial resistance. And so we're really excited to not only be funding this local ecosystem, but, but being able to help launch into the future. When you think of ARPANET-H, uh, one of the primary innovations that we're bringing forward is, is how we do contracting. So Craig, who you met earlier, uh, we, we call him in an endearing way in the agency the chief bureaucracy hacker. <laughs> so for any of you that have worked with the federal government, it can be a long and cumbersome process. Uh, of course, not working with us here as part of this award, uh, but, but it can take months to get under contract. And so uh, with this, the award that we have at the Venture Well, it's meant to be more like a business to business interaction. And so if we want to work with a community or a small business, that turnaround time should allow us to do very quick cycles of even product innovation. So design, test, build, iterate over the course of a project so that by the end, not only are, do we have the funding lined up, but we also have products that our customers, whether they're patients or healthcare providers, want to enthusiastically adopt. Um, that is unique to the federal government, and it's something that ARPA-H is bringing forward today uh, with the Investor Catalyst Hub. Um, I really want to get to the conversational piece of this, and uh, we really had an opportunity today to spend time with members of the greater Boston community. And, uh, you know, it's really important. So, so Boston, yes, is, is a biotech center, but unfortunately, where a two-mile difference can also mean a 23-year difference in life expectancy. That's, that's right here in the city. And so getting innovation out of the lab and down the street remains a challenge. And so we can start here and really scale this to, to the country. The Investor Catalyst Hub will really help us close that gap. And so this morning we got to spend time with communities, not only looking at innovative ways to introduce technologies, but the actual innovative technologies themselves. And so um, I invite uh, my, my panel of powerhouse women uh, to their seats that we're going to start a conversation. I'll introduce you as you're, as you're coming up here. So uh, meet Gladys Vega. She is the executive director of La Collaborativa. And I'll say I felt like I was staffing uh, Gladys today in her community where I, she hugged everybody that she saw. Uh, they all ran up to her. And, you know, it's really important for us as, as we launch new programs at ARPA-H to, to build trust with communities so we can have these conversations. And I think Craig said today, you know, when you're going to ask something really weird about a new technology to somebody, it can't be the first time that you meet them. <laughs> and so we, we hope to bring those really innovative new technologies forward. Uh, Mariana... Uh, you took us today to a manhole to collect wastewater. <laughs> uh, you're the CEO and co-founder of Biobot Analytics, and uh, we're going to hear a little bit about the innovation that you're bringing forward. And Dr. Ann Kabansky, uh, thank you for being here, the CEO of Mass General Brigham. So I'm going to go ahead and transition. I think my mic will work as I get over there. Can you all hear me still? Okay. Well, thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a conversation, and I hope there's time for a few questions. Uh, our elected officials, thank you for coming. We 